Hi, welcome to this session on shell scripting. Until now, we had seen about basic shell commands. We had also seen some of the shell constructs which includes the shell variables. We had seen how relational operators, arithmetic operators and boolean operators work. In this session, we will see some examples so that we understand how to use all these operators in a program. We also seen a part of the if statement and what we will do is we will combine all these things together to do some programming using shell. So, let us start with some example. Usually, we will be asked to complete a task using the shell scripting. So, if you look at the first example, what we need to do is we have to write a script that shows the current date, time, username and the current working directory of the user. So, how do we go about writing the script? Let us take a look at the example 1 that we have. So, I will edit this file example1.sh and if you look at this file, the first thing you should you note is how the code is commented. So, it is mandatory that you comment whatever you write because understanding shell scripting can at times become very complicated, one due to syntax and other due to the logic that you follow. So, in this code, the very first, the very first line invokes the bash shell and if you see then line numbers 2, 3, 4 and 5 or the comments that we want to write for this code. And if you look at line number 7, we have used the echo statement and we have used one of the shell variables called log name. Okay? So, log name, so this will answer your question on how to see the current date, time, the user name. So, this is the log name actually the shell variable log name contains the user name and therefore, the first line will print the username. And then if you see the line number 8, if you see this, it says that the current date and time is and then you have the date command and the date command is presented within the back quote. The back quote tells us that the output of the date command will be printed. In this case, whatever is the current date and as well as the time. The Line number 9 actually tells you who am I, I mean it tells you who is the user name okay? and line number 10 actually tells you the current working directory of the user. Again if you see we had put the back code which tells you that the output of the pwd command should be printed by the echo statement. And finally, we can also see that we can include other shell commands within this shell script. So, if you look at this wc is the actually counts the number of lines in this program. So, in this case what we are doing is we are counting the number of lines in the current program itself. The current program is the program that we are going to run right now. So, once I run this program, you can see that it prints okay, the log name, the person who is logged in and then the current date and the time and if you see here, it is the output of the date command that is getting printed and then the username is MJS Raman and then it tells you the current working directory where I am having these programs. Okay? And the last line says that the number of lines in the file is 11. So, wc command actually tells you how much uh, you can do the word count, you can do the number of characters etcetera using this program, this command shell command. And in our case, we are given wc space minus l which tells you the number of lines in the program and it tells you that the example.sh has about 11 lines. So, this is a very small program that tells you okay, how to write a shell script, a small shell script to just get some information and this makes use of the shell variables to display the values. Now, let us go to the next program. Okay, in this program, what we will try to do is we will add two numbers and we will make use of the command line arguments. Okay? And if the two numbers are not given in the command line, the shell script must throw out an error uh, regarding its usage. Uh, this is a convention that is followed when you are writing any kind of scripts. Uh, if the usage, the way to use the scripts must be 
told to the user. How it can be done? I mean, there are many ways in Unix, as you would know, you could create man pages or you could give an info command, etc. But when you are writing a shell script, it is convention that if the user does not type the parameters properly, you are supposed to tell the user how to use the command. Okay, so let us go and take a look at this example uh, to see how this can be accomplished. So, we have to accomplish two tasks. The first task is that if the user does not give the command properly or does not invoke this, this current shell script properly, we should throw out an error and tell the user how to use the command. If the user gives all the commands properly or gives the input parameters properly, then we should be able to add the two numbers and print the result. So, this process of validating the inputs is very important uh, in not only shell scripting, but even in any programming language. So, usually it is referred, referred to as garbage in, garbage out. And if you give garbage in, and the, the computer is going to throw out garbage out. Therefore, it is always better that you validate the parameters that are given for a function or a program, not only shell script, but even if you are going to, going to code in a C programming language. Now, let us take a look at this example shell script. Okay, we will invoke this example. We will first understand the example shell script and then we will run it. So, as usual, we are commenting the code. And so, take this line, I mean, line number 9. So, if you remember, we are told that dollar hash represents the number of parameters, okay, that is going to be input to the shell script, okay. And if the number of parameters is not equal to 2, then it tells you how to use this command. Okay? So, usually you put usage is then the command name dollar zero refers to the command name and then you have to give integer 1 and integer 2. For example, I mean it is also better you give an example because it is slightly cryptic. So, we can say the command and then give if you give number 5 and 7, then your program will print sum of 5 and 7 is 12. And then you should exit. Remember when you write the code properly or when the code execute properly, you are supposed to return exit of 0 and if there is any error in the code or any error in the input or the program does not terminate properly because of some issue, then you should always assign a positive value. So, in this case, if you look at it, I have assigned a value of 1. Now, after this, if the input gets validated, let us say that you have passed the proper parameters, then what I do is I just use the expression command okay, and then calculate dollar the sum of dollar 1 and dollar 2 where dollar 1 refers to the first parameter which corresponds to integer 1 and dollar 2 refers to the second parameter that corresponds to integer 2 obviously this command takes only integers and i hope you remember that in order to calculate floating point we have to use some other command in the shell script so let us try to now execute this command i mean now if you look at this whatever we had given if hash 2. If you look at this hash 2, that means you do not give the number of parameters. So, I this command expects an integer 1 and integer 2. If it does do not give integer 1 and integer 2, you see that we have to give it like this. Okay? So, let us try to give. So, the command says that how to print this. So, let us say I give 5 and I do not give the second input. Again, it tells you that this is not the way to use the command and now I give 7. So, now the command works properly saying that the number of inputs are sufficient to do the calculation. So, we will also try some other number. Okay. So, this works for all integer numbers and if you look at this, we have learned some good way to tell the user that you have to do uh, validation, the input validation before you type any command in shell script. Okay. Now, moving on. We will now go to a slightly complicated example. Now, this example asks you to find out the biggest of the three integers which are given in the command line. So, there are two things that we should do. One, print the error message if sufficient arguments are not supplied. And the second most important aspect is to prepare a logic for this program. Uh, when you do shell scripting, first of all, we should understand that syntax of shell script is slightly difficult to follow. Second, in, other than that, 
you need to also have a very solid logic when you write programs. We will see that in this program, what looks like a very simple program, the logic is slightly complicated. Okay? So, let us see how we will solve this problem first of all. Let us first take this example and see how we can identify the highest or the biggest of the three numbers. Okay, let us assume okay, the algorithm that is given, uh, obviously this algorithm has an error. So, at the end of this, you should try to find out what is the error and in case you are having your laptops, please ensure that you debug this program and find out what is the right logic to be implemented. So, in our case, we have taken this slightly complicated example to tell you that not only your shell scripting is some technique is needed for writing a shell script, it you also need to identify a good logic to solve a problem. So, let us assume that we have three numbers. Okay? So, as usual, if the user does not give three numbers as arguments, you have to give an error message and probably you can also give the usage of this. So, in our case, we have not given the usage of this. Now, let us look at the logic. Okay? So, I take the first number as the first parameter as number 1, the second parameter as number 2 and the third parameter as number 3. Now, let us go into the logic. So, the logic says that if the first number is greater than the second number and the second number is greater than the sorry the first number is greater than the third number then we know that number 1 is the biggest number. I think this is very straightforward. Now, the same logic can be applied to numbers 2 and 3. Therefore, if you look at line number 26, it says that if number 2 is greater than number 1 and number 2 is greater than number 3, then we know that number 2 is the biggest of the numbers. And if you find out the biggest of the numbers, then I have to return with the exit value of 0. This is convention. So, because we have found out the biggest number. Similarly, what could happen is the third number is the biggest of the other two. Therefore, what we do is we do number 3 is greater than number 1 and number 3 is greater than number 2. Remember, we have to put an AND condition because the given number must be greater than the other two numbers. Okay, now, having said a logic like this, the question that we need to ask is what happens if all the three numbers are equal okay, or if the two numbers are equal. So, let us see that if all the three numbers are equal, then we can actually print it because we can say that if number 1 is equal to number 2 and number 2 is equal to number 3, okay, we say that all the numbers are equal and print. Now, do you think this logic is sufficient? Okay? So, we are trying to find out whether number 1 is equal to number 2 and number 2 is equal to number 3. So, such questions you need to ask when you write your programs. It is not just you go and write a program because such type of errors, I mean if there is an error in this program, it will be slightly difficult to debug. Okay? That is one of the reasons that, that we had given this program as an example. And finally, if I do not, if I fail in any of these conditions, because I am using an if condition, if I fail in any of these conditions, then I say I am not smart enough to answer your question. Now, this is like giving up, saying that look, I cannot find out the minimum maximum of three numbers, but let us see whether this program works first of all. Okay? So, let us try to supply the inputs to the program. Okay? And if I do not supply the inputs properly, actually I mean this program will will give an error out. Okay? So, now in this case, you have to give the way you have to use it is number 1, number 2 and number 3 are not given. So, let us try to give the first case where I see number 1 okay, is greater than the rest of the numbers. So, I can see example 3 dot sh, I will give first number as 3, 2 and 1 and the program works correctly. It says that 3 is the biggest of the numbers. Let us try the second case. I will give the inputs as 1, 3 and 2. Again, this program works correctly and finds out that 3 is the big, largest of the numbers. Let us try the third case. 
1, 2 and 3 and this program still says that 3 is the biggest of the number. Probably I mean if you, if you still have any confusion, let us say I will put 10, 20 and 30. So, it says 30 is the biggest number. So, let us now look at, so we have executed example 3 with 3 numbers. The first number, the third number is now the greatest of the 3 numbers and it works correctly. If you remember, these were the first 3 if statements that we had designed. Now, what we will go ahead and do is, we will give equal numbers to see whether our logic of equal numbers works correctly. So, I give you numbers 10, 10 and 10 and it says all numbers are equal and it works correctly. Now, this process of giving the correct inputs okay, and then testing the logic of your program is a part of unit testing. So, whenever you write a shell script, you are also supposed to do a small portion of unit testing to see that your code works. Now, unit testing not only consists of positive cases, but you should also test one or two negative cases. So, until now, we had followed the logic of the program and then given the inputs. What we will do right now is, we will now try to give inputs which does not follow the logic of the program. So, let us try to see whether if we give such inputs, the program works correctly, the shell script whether it works correctly. So, let us try this example 3 dot sh, I will give 10, 10 and 20. Wow, this works correctly and we assume that this is going to work correctly for the rest of the inputs. So, what we will try to do is, we will now try to make the last two numbers equal. So, what I will try to do is, I will try to make 20 and then I will give 10 and 10 and again this program finds out that 20 is the biggest number. So, do you think the logic is correct? Okay, let us see, give some other inputs. So, let us start giving an input like 10, 20 and 10 and again this says third 20 is the biggest number. So, is there, so do you think that after passing all these tests, your program is right? Let us try some more inputs. So, probably what we should do is, we should try, uh, can you think of any other combination other than this? Okay, let me now try to get a combination of 1, 2 and 2 and it is so surprising that your program says, I am not smart enough to answer your question. Now, the challenge for you is, can you find out this bug? So, it is so surprising that when I give 10, 20, 20, okay, it says, let us try to give 10, 20, 20, okay, and what could be the bug in this program 10, 20 and 20? This says, I am not smart enough to answer your question, whereas when I give 10, 10 and 20, it is able to find the biggest number. Now, these type of errors are extremely difficult to detect. So, you should have a very solid logic when you write your programs. Now, we leave this open for you to identify the bug in this program and how to fix the bug. In that way, you will be able to gain more and more experience in shell scripting as well as debugging uh, and you must also understand that not only you should do scripting, you should also a minim, do a minimal amount of testing and these test cases must be carefully designed such that it can identify the errors in your program. Please remember, making a mistake while writing a shell program is normal. It is only abnormal if you can write your shell program work correctly at the first shot. Thank you.